Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. How are you doing today? Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And it is Monday. You know what that means. That means we speak to the one and only Greg Dickerson. How are you doing, sir? Doing fantastic, Michael. How are you today? I'm doing wonderful, man. We got some exciting topics today. And the first thing I want to do is I want to bring up something I've been working on as kind of a pet project. And what I've been doing is I've been researching the last 40 years of housing. So basically 1980, 85, 90. So every five-year period. And what I, was, what I was trying to figure out, this was my question to myself, Greg, is what year was housing most expensive for the average family of four? So average house, average family of four. Again, everything here is national because I, I couldn't pick regional. I don't know that the data exists regionally that far back. So national housing prices, average interest rate, average income family of four, you know, wh when was housing most expensive? So that's what I was trying to figure out. And I didn't know the answer. Do you, do you have a guess actually, when you think about that? I'm going to say seventies. Oh, I only went back to 1980. I'm sorry. I haven't gone back that far, but I may go oh, back. Oh, 80. Again. Okay. Yeah. So from 80 onwards, um, I'm going to say nineties, uh, 89, 90, late eighties, early nineties. Before okay. that, it would have been the seventies. Okay. All right. I may actually go back and update the data to go back even farther. People have, people have often guessed the 70. So maybe I should have gone. Well, that's because further. that's when you had, you know, like my parents, their first house, I mean, interest rates were like 19, 20%. Ah, I need to go back further. I could do that. So maybe I'll make so it. So as far years. as when you say most expensive, what that triggers in my mind is affordability index. So yes. that's, that's where I'm. So the houses may not have been more expensive in relation to obviously the prices are lower if the interest rates are higher, but your payments higher. So from an affordability percentage of income standpoint, yeah. That was probably one of the most expensive time frames, at least in my world. Now, I don't know, you know, I don't really study housing before the 70s. That's kind of yeah. as far back as I go. <laughs> Fair enough. I may actually add those, you know, 1970 and 75, because I think that would be interesting because those are the mm -hmm. years of stagflation. So it could mm -hmm. be it could be interesting, especially if we think stagflation is on our future. So you know what? I'm going to add those periods. That's only two more pieces of re research. All right. Well, let me bring up the spreadsheet. Uh, and actually, it will probably surprise you. All right, so hopefully you can see that. I'm actually going to move us. Um, I'm going to collapse our view, actually. Actually, you know what? I think I can just show you. Yeah, there we go. You see it? Greg, yeah. do you see? Okay, cool. So let me just orient you uh, to the columns. Uh, and then it, every column is the same. So I went back and found the median home price in 1980, 55 grand. Uh, interest rate in 1980, again, I, you know, Google that was 13.74. Uh, what I assume for down payment, and this is something brand new. No one has seen this because I got a lot of feedback. I assumed in this example, the down payment was 20%. You see that here? Mm -hmm. So 20% of 55 grand is 11 grand. You're going to then finance it. So you're going to finance 44 grand. Simple math, right? I then did the payment calculation, assuming 13.74% and, and this finance amount equals 512. Again, this is median income for a family of four in 1980 for the country, not regionalized. So for the country, it was 21 grand. I then divided that by 12 to get gross income. So it's not net, it's gross because I didn't know the tax, marginal tax rates back in the 80s. So I just used gross. Right now, the payment, uh, the payment so 512 is 29, basically 30% of gross income. And then again, feedback I got from the audience was tell me about the down payment. So right now, the down payment of 11 grand is 52% of the median family income. So I did that for each period. So let's fast forward to 1990. So 1990, the average home price was 97 grand. Interest went down to about 10%. Down payment again, 20% of that is 19.4. Financed amount, payment amount, family of four's income went up about about 50%. Now their gross income is 2,500. Gross, their payment to gross is 27%. So it went down a little bit, but the down payment is climbing. Mm -hmm. So let's jump forward to like 2005, right before the bubble, right? Uh, prices since 1990 basically doubled. So they're 191. Interest rates are in a half. That's one of the things I realized in this is that interest rate has an outsized impact. Down payments. Yeah, that's what I've been talking about. And I always have been all the way back since 04, 05. I was screaming interest rates and nobody listened. Everybody's like, ah, oh, you're crazy. Interest rates have nothing to do with it. Oh, it's all, I mean, what you're about to see is interest rate has everything to do with it. 
um, which I didn't appreciate to your point and, and good, good for you calling that out. So again, payments now are 906 because you're financing a lot more, but the rate's cut in half. The average family income now is 58 grand. So rough, so 15 years basically doubled your gross income for the month because I need to get to a monthly payment. So now your payment to gross is 18%, right? All down from 27. But the down payment now is 60, almost 66% of income. Make sense where we are? So now if we yeah. fast forward to 2020, payments or the house is up 80 grand. So now it's 270, but man, look at that interest rate, 2.89 down payment, all that, all the same stuff. But now look at income is 78.5. Again, family of four. This is not an individual. This is family of four, likely two incomes. 6,500 bucks a month. Again, just simple math. That now your payment's 13%, 13.7%. And then the down payment is, you know, I don't know, 69%. So this is pretty crazy because when you do the math through 2020, um, it's cheap. It, it was never cheaper than 2020, again, on an income level. I think these numbers are staggering, but it is so interest rate, interest rate related. It is. It's always has been. I mean, inter the cost of your financing is pertinent and paramount in any deal. It doesn't matter what kind of deal you're doing. It's all about the financing. And uh, that's why I said 80s, you know, late 80s, early 90s. I knew that was going to be the highest as far yeah. as an affordability index because the interest rates were just way higher. And then they didn't really start coming down until that 2000 time frame. Right. And I remember when we started reaching the peak of our market, 0405, I was writing articles all the time. Yeah. Um, I wrote a regular column for a newspaper down there and was interviewed a lot. That's when I was on the Cavuto show. Now that was that was the 0809 time frame. But um, I warned about interest rates. And I said, yeah. all you gotta do is watch them. Back then it was five percent. Right. Um, you were right. We got we got down below five. And I said, as soon as we get back to five percent or up, it's gonna tank the market. And it did. Yeah. This there's a lot of great data in this. And um your, I don't know what I would call it, intuition or experience was, was dead on. And this data just validates it, right? Um, so there's a couple of things I've added to this because people have been looking at it and said, you know, what the hell kind of stuff. So a couple of things. First off, I added uh, July 2021 data. And it actually, you see a couple of changes. Mm -hmm. so, so first off, prices are up a lot. We just talked about this, 363 as the median. Interest rates were down slightly in July. Um, but a couple of things you notice here, it, the big one. So first off, we hit a low in 2020. They're going up now because prices are accelerating so fast. Uh, and then second, this is a big bugaboo for me. Um, the down payment now is 91%. That is, um, that's a problem, right? It's never been above, what is it? Highest it was 73% back here. And now we had a spike. So this is telling me that housing has seen a big spike in 2021. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So a couple of things, right? Cause there's, I get a lot of feedback. The first feedback is, Hey, Michael, nobody can does 20% down. We only do 5% loans, all of that. You're being unrealistic, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, fine. So this is what I did this morning. You're the first person to see this. So what I did is I made the down payment a variable that I could change in one cell and it ripples through. So what I did is now let's assume it's 5% cause that's what everybody was telling me to do. So I've never done this. I'm going to see this the first time. I expect what's going to change is row seven, because that'll be the payment. Actually, wait, row five, the down payment will change. The finance uh, will change. And then what I'm really looking for is row 10 and 11. That's going to be the ones for me. So well, here- 5% we down, the only people doing that are first time home buyers. If you're, nobody's getting 95% loans on- Yeah, I just wanted to see. Everybody was complaining in my notes, hey- let, let's do an owner occupant. You're talking investors with 20%. Let's talk owner occupant. And I don't so. even know that you could do that pre 2000. I don't think there were 95% loans pre 2000. There might've been. I'm so glad you brought that up. I looked, I spent an hour yesterday, folks, if you're watching this and you can send me a link to when the first time three and a half percent down loan was created, I would love to see that. I spent hours yesterday on the couch trying to Google that data. And I couldn't find it when the when the three and a half percent down first time buyer program was created. I could not find a start. So if you can find it, folks, let me know. But let's just yeah, back back in those days, late 80s, early 90s. So I bought my first house in 1990. And I remember interest rates were way high. They were, uh, you know, around that 10 percent. So we mm -hmm. bought them what's called a three two one buy down mm. uh, where your interest rate was lower the first year, goes up the second year, goes up the third year. Oh. And the idea was your income should grow oh, wow. uh, over the next three years so that your payment can go up. 
Huh. And the other thing that was being offered was developer kickbacks to get people into the house and to help with down payment assistance. Oh, wow. So those types of things were there. But anyways, I didn't yeah. mean to interrupt you there, it's but okay. I just... I like it. It's just, it's, I don't. I have no idea what's about to happen because I have not done this yet. I hope. First off, I hope the math works. Oh, cool! It did. All right. So first and foremost, if you do a five percent down, the first thing I look at is row ten. You're thirty five percent. You're getting a no, no. There's no bank. There's no bank that will approve you uh, at thirty five percent of gross because that's probably like forty two or forty three percent of net for just for your mortgage. So the first thing that tells me is you're probably right. There were no 5% down loans back here in, you know, back 80, 80, 85, yeah. 90. That's, that's crazy. Down payment's a lot more reasonable though. I tell you, you know, it's a lot easier to sit, you know, 13% of income for the down payment. Cause your down payment's 2,700 bucks back in 1980, assuming you could get a 5% loan. So let's fast forward to 2005. Let's see what we're doing here. All right. So 2005, your down payment's only nine grand. All right. 10 grand, maybe. That makes sense, right? 5% of 200 grand. Your payment, though, is 22%. Uh, and then your down payment is six. Yeah, you're still reasonable. So let's fast forward to today because that's where the spike happened. Oh, it's still not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too bad. You know, yeah. it's interesting because I remember when I got my real estate license, you know, back, back in the 2000s, early 2000s, we were doing a lot of these calculations and the rule of thumb back then was you could, you could, the affordability, uh -huh. you could afford three times your annual income. That was the threshold. And your debt to okay. income ratio was like 30%. Yeah. So if you made a hundred grand a year, you were, you would qualify for a $300,000 house. That's kind of how that worked. Yeah. Yeah. What I take from this, again, if you're doing a 5% down owner rock, I would tell you the houses, the housing today, even in this spike in 21 is affordable, right? It's 20%. That's your payment, 20% of your income. That's that's reasonable. That's one one in five. And then the down payment's very reasonable. It's 22%. It's only 18 grand. So yeah. And if you're a first time buyer, you can get you know assistance and programs where you, yeah. you can put three to five percent down on your first house. Um, and we've talked about that. Yeah. The only thing driving the housing market, the only thing driving the housing market are interest rates. And you know, yeah. especially with millennials, because they're like, man, it makes zero sense to rent mm. when I can when I can afford pay the same payment and own. Yeah. So here's a, here's another thing because I knew I was going to talk to you. This is something I built yesterday because you and I both believe that at some point interest rates, back to our earlier point, will destroy housing, right? So what I did is I just copied July 21. So I just took the columns from over, over here to, to here. And then I, I played what I call the what if game. The only variable I changed was interest rate, right? 4%, 5%, 6%. And I just let them ripple through. I assume 20% down for this because again, investor loans. Uh, so what you find is at 4%, we're basically 21% 20 of gross. So that brings us back to kind of 2000-ish, right? So again, I would ask if you're watching this, was housing affordable in 2000? And most people would say yes, right? So at a 4% interest rate, I think housing is still okay. 5%, again, everything stayed the same. Value, income, all of that. You're now at 23.5% of gross. So if you go back and look at the math, 23% takes you back to right around probably 94, 95, yeah, 93, 94. Again, I would ask, was housing affordable in 94, 95? Most people would say yes. And okay, now I think I think housing blows up at 6%, right? It, it hurts my head to think that high, but I did the math. 6%, again, it only takes payment to 26% of the average income. So 26% takes you back to, I don't know, 91, right? This, this number right around here. So again, was housing expensive in 1990? And you can see it can obviously get more expensive. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought that was an interesting exercise. It is, it is. And the thing to look at, so 4% is your number now. 4% yeah, will, will tank the housing market in terms of demand. When I say tank, the yeah. market's not going to crash like right. overnight, but it's going to tank demand, which will take a while to trickle through. Exactly. 5% uh, yes. would be disastrous. But 4% is where the tipping point is now. And it might mm. even be three, mm. three and a half, as we've seen lately, because now we're sub 3%. It's mental thresholds and conditioning, just like stocks with those mental, uh, you know, points of resistance and support price points. Here's what you need to do now mm -hmm. is the, the thing that you've held constant is the value of the house. What you need to do now is hold the payment constant and show mm -hmm. how that affects the value of the house 
based on interest rates. So for every 1%, the interest rate changes at the same payment, mm. the house goes up or down. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I can so, do that. So I'd I add a column for that so that so that people can really understand what we're saying when we say the housing market's going to crash if interest rates go up. Because if all you have to spend, let's take at 4%, yeah. um, if you have $1,300 a month to spend, and that's all you can spend based on your income, because your income's not changing, mm -hmm. only your payment will, now your payment's fifteen hundred. What does that do to the price of the house that you can I, afford? I will do that. I will have that spreadsheet available certainly by next week for our discussion. Yeah. I think that would be interesting. that's an interesting exercise. That that will show you what I'm talking about and what mm -hmm. builders face and why builders are pulling back a lot is because they're selling payments. Yeah. And oh, absolutely. If interest rates go up to three percent, that four hundred thousand dollars house is now three fifty. So every one percent affects it by uh, about ten percent on the yeah. price point of a house. Yeah, so I will do that. Uh, I do not have that in this data. That you're the see. This is why I like sharing data with experts because they give me great ideas. I will build that spreadsheet myself. The other thing I did, again, feedback from my audience is there's actually a channel, Greg, talking about a 30 year mortgage at one percent. Can you imagine that? Well, that that would be hard to imagine. I don't know. Yeah, the government's probably the only one supplying that mortgage. The I other thing is the 40-year mortgage. That's the other thing uh, we've heard a lot yeah. of talk about, which other countries have 40-year mortgages. Yeah. So I think a 40-year mortgage is, is coming. I, I absolutely think it's coming. I, I think it's years out, but I think it's coming. The other thing I think, I did a review of that um, video and I said, I could see 1.99, but I can't see 1% because I think banks have to have, make a margin, right? They got to cover overhead. They got to do all these other things. But again, the audience asks, so I did it. So what I was thinking is, hey, uh, at 1% interest, again, everything else being equal, this is part of my what if game, your payment goes down to 14%. But what I did here is I wanted to, I wanted to look at appreciation because I know if rates go lower, values are going up, right? So what I did is, okay, what happens if 1% you know, interest, what would happen to payments if they went up 25%? So again, you're still healthy at 17% of gross. Again, we've seen 17% only here recently. What about 50% value increase? Well, again, because interest rates are so low, you're still only at 21%. And then, you know, what the hell? I don't think I've done 75 before, but let's do it. Again, you're at 24%. Now you're getting kind of crazy. You're getting back to the 90s and 80s from affordability. But basically my point is if a 30-year mortgage has ever got to 1%, you want to be a homeowner because values are going to explode higher. Is that fair? Oh, absolutely. Homeowner, investor, whatever. Yeah. Property yeah you, is the more you own, the better, right? <laughs> oh, that's funny. So thank you for the cars. I mean, that's the only reason Yeah, you know, cars crazy. can sell for $100,000 for an average SUV is because you, they're spreading payments out over 84 months now on yeah, vehicles. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't see a 1% coming, but again, I had to put it out there. Um, yeah. this My big takeaway from this is um, it's it's all interest rates. I mean, I knew interest rates were important. I just didn't know how important. Um, well, it's yeah. the same thing for commercial. It's the exact mm -hmm. same thing. And it always has been. They're income properties. It's all based on the cash flow. And see, that I understood that intuitively because that's the market I grew up in. Absolutely. It yeah. was an investment property market. So it was all about cash flows. And everything was based on the income, net income the property would produce. Same thing with commercial. And then as you're buying a house, that's the first thing you do is you, you look at you know what's your income. And you had that debt to income ratio and you bought a house based on what you could afford. And it was, you know, roughly 30% uh, of your income is what you had to spend on your monthly payment, taxes, insurance, maintenance, you know, the, the pity payment. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, this has been a lot of fun for me, Greg. Uh, you have a YouTube channel that is blowing up. How can people find you, follow you, be part of your world? Yeah, gregdickerson.com. All the links to all my social media are there. And I talk about entrepreneurship, real estate, real estate development, uh, buying businesses, investing in markets, investing in cryptos, all kinds of stuff. Everything entrepreneurship. Yeah, you got to follow him. He is the entrepreneur. Thanks, buddy.